Representing proportional relationships. How can you use tables, graphs, and equations to re represent a proportional situation? Well, let's look at the way proportional relationships can be represented, and they can be represented in multiple ways. I'm going to use a whale to kind of give us an idea of how this is all going to pull together. Now, we know in words, let's say that a whale can eat an average of two tons of plankton every day. Now, remember that word, average. That doesn't mean that it's eating exactly two tons of plankton every day, but up and down about two tons of plankton. So using this, we can think that after one day, it eats two tons. At two days, it eats four tons. At three days, it eats six tons, and so on. And we can see the relationship. We can see the pattern that we're going to multiply times two no matter how many days that, that we're talking about with the whale. Now, we can also do this via a table. And we can set up our table with days and plankton. And we can say that after zero days, which means we haven't really started yet, there'd be zero tons of plankton eaten by the whale. After one day, we'll have two tons. At two days, we have four tons. At three days, six tons. And four days, we have eight tons. This gives us an example. And we can see if we only saw the table and we had nothing else, this 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8, we can continue the pattern 5, 10, 6, 12, and we can see that it's doubling every single time. Now, I need to talk about dependent and independent before we continue talking about what this looks like with an equation. Now, if we think about independent, independent is something that is not relying on anything. It is going to be a certain set of numbers or behavior that we're going to notice is independent. Now, dependent means that what it occurs or what its value will depend on the value of something else. It's going to depend on what's happening somewhere else that will give it its value. So if we think about it this way, we're going to look at a dependent variable is a variable whose value depends on the value of a variable called the independent variable. Well, if we think of days and plankton, the thing, one thing that depends on the other is plankton. Plankton depends on how many days. How many tons of plankton depends on how many days. So we're going to say that the dependent variable is y. So we're going to put a y here underneath plankton. Now, the independent variable then would be the other one, the variable that defines the value or determines the value of another variable or the dependent variable. So we're going to call this x. So what this does for us is this helps us, once we understand what's dependent and what's independent, it helps us to set up our equation. So when we're looking at to design an equation for this particular situation, we would say that the number of plankton or the tons of plankton would depend upon how many days there are. But there's also a variable involved here that we're not looking at, or I should say a constant we're not looking at. That constant is what happens every single day. Well, we know that the whale eats two tons of plankton every single day. So it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. It's a one-to-two relationship. And it's a constant, too, because, again, we're talking an average. So now we're looking at an equation that is y equals 2x. And when we look at the equation, this value, this number, this constant that is associated with the x, which is the independent variable, we can see that that's where the relationship lies, or that's where the change occurs. Now, the last thing we want to look at is doing it via a graph. Now, when we graph something, we want to make sure that we follow certain rules of graphing. One is we want to label the axes with words, not just x and y. So in this instance, because we have days and plankton, we're going to label the independent or the x-axis is days, and the y-axis, we're going to call it tons of plankton. So I'm going to write it down here and move it. Tons of plankton. And then I'm going to take it and move it up here. Now you'll notice that I've kept it kind of far away from the axes, enough so that I can add a few things in there. What I want to add is the numbers. That's my next step. Because sometimes, in this case, it's great. Everything goes by one, so we can use one on every box. But what if it said that 
a, a whale eats 10 tons of plankton every day. We probably wouldn't want to count every box as 10. We probably want to count by fives, things like that. So once you label your axes, you're able to decide what, how you want to number them. So for us, days will work out okay. We'll call it one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And the same thing with tons of plankton. This first one will be one, the second one, two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. Okay, so that will give us some numbers on there. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to plot the relationship. So at zero days, there's zero tons of plankton. And at one day, it's two tons of plankton. And at two days, four tons of plankton. Three days, six tons of plankton. Four days, eight tons of plankton. And we have a set of points now based on what we saw. Now, the next thing we need to do is we're not really finished because all this does is show us what one day, two day, three days, and four days looks like. Well, what happens at five days or 10 days or even one and a half days? So the way to do that is we need to draw a line. So I'm going to grab a line here and I'm going to uh, make some changes on my line a little bit. I'm going to make sure that it starts the right way and ends the right way and pick a nice fun color here. I'll pick a blue one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw through my points and continue up. One of the things you will notice is that here at the bottom, there is no arrow point down here. It's a beginning spot. The reason for that is because you can't have negative plankton. You can't have negative days when you're trying to figure out something in the real world. So it's going to actually start on the y-axis. And here it's going to start at 0, 0. The reason that there's an arrow going on on the other end is because it goes on forever. We didn't show all the possibilities. There are many, many possibilities, and those are linked therein. Now, if I only showed you the graph, what you would do is you would find points. For example, I'm showing these points, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, and 4, 8. You would use those points to show a pattern. And we'll talk more again um, when we talk about rate of change and how we can look at that and find that number just by looking at the graph. Now, we want to take a look at some other ideas and concepts that show a constant of proportionality. For example, the amount of money earned per hour. If you make $8 an hour, it depends how many hours you work to find out how much money you would make. The number of bicycles produced per day. If a factory produced 200 bicycles a day, at two days, it's 400 bicycles. At three days, it's 600 bicycles. These are called the constant, the constant of proportionality. These things are not changing, at least in order to figure something out. Okay, It's proportional and because it's going to start at 0, 0. Because if I don't work, I make no money. If the factory is closed, they make no bicycles. So because it's considered proportional, because 0, 0 is where it all begins. It's constant because we're giving a set average or a set number. Um, the number of days a car is rented in relationship to the cost. If a car costs me $25 a day. If I don't rent a car at all, it doesn't cost me anything. So again, I'm at zero, zero, making it proportional. And then it goes on from there that it's $25 a day for one day, $50 for two days, $75 for three days. And the amount of time a hiker hikes and the distance traveled, there's another example of what that would be as well showing the proportionality. If he doesn't hike, he doesn't travel anywhere. So zero, zero. In that constant, let's say he travels um, every three hours, he travels six miles. And then that would be his rate. Okay. Now, what do all of these ideas have in common? These ideas I just mentioned, plus the whale. Well, they have these several things in common. First, they're all graphed in the first quadrant because these are things that occur in the real world. What do I mean by first quadrant? We know that a coordinate plane is made up of four quadrants. We're talking about this quadrant here. This is where the real world is, okay? The real world exists in the first quadrant. There is no negative time, no negative distance, etc. That's why these things are graphed there. Second thing they have in common, Right now, these ideas all start at 0, 0. They start at the origin. In other words, if nothing happens, nothing occurs. So between the dependent and independent variable, it's going to start at that point of 0, 0. It's not starting with anything ahead of time. Also, the outcome depends on something else. We notice that 
is a dependent variable here involved. Something depends on something else. And the last is the rates are constant. There is a pattern to the data. And if we look hard enough, we should be able to find that data. Hopefully this explains a little bit more about proportional relationships as we look further into it.